<laughs> and right now, we are so excited for our next guest. He's one of our favorites to have yeah, here. Yeah. You know him from his groundbreaking role in Marvel, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah, now Simu Liu is out with a poignant and special new memoir called We Were Dreamers, an immigrant superhero origin story. And it's great to have you back on GMA. Congratulations, it's by the way. It's always such a pleasure to be back. With. New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Woo! I mean, it fe I, it's, it's an incredible feeling. It's a little bit of disbelief, as always. But um, no, what, what's really impactful to me is just knowing that, you know, these immigrant stories, a story of how my family came to be here in North America, and, and you know, representative of the millions of immigrant stories that are out there, that those stories can make it into the mainstream and our, and our perspectives can be seen and heard. I mean, that's just, that, that is, means the world to me. Uh, speaking of stories, we, we did a little digging, and before you were a best-selling author oh, no. and Marvel no. superstar, we, we yeah. noticed that you were also a, a model for stock photo Ooh. images. And, uh, and we found Every a couple here. single time. <laughs> so, back there, there, back there. there we go. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, explain this to me. I understand Zumba, something about Zumba, and your fans getting involved as well. That's right. Well, you know, the, uh, yeah, this is, that, that's me doing, that, that's me keeping active. Where's it's me the showing the world what an active lifestyle looks like. We're getting into it. We're, we're staying moving. active. You know, we're moving. And, um, and, and one of my fans on Twitter uh, pho photoshopped some, uh, some w copies of We Were Dreamers into the hands. So I was able to reclaim these stock photos. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you know? goodness, because I was paid $100 to do that shoot. Ooh. I've never been paid a penny more. And so finally, <laughs> yeah. finally, I get to profit off of, you know, off of what I did all along. Yeah. 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 Well, let's go back to the book right now. Uh, why did you want to write it now? What do you want people to take away from it? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I totally get the cynicism that, that I think a lot of people have. I'm 33 years old. I came out with one movie. Why would I write a book no. about my life? But uh, truly, I mean, this isn't a book about about my life. And if, and if you're expecting this kind of tell-all Hollywood memoir, you're going to be really disappointed. This is very much a, a multi-generational story of what it means to pursue your dreams. And it starts not with me, but with my parents in the 1960s mm. and 1970s growing up in China, which obviously was a very different environment than we know, or even a very different environment than America was in the 60s and 70s. And so, you know, hearing their struggles for me uh, in all the, you know, the, the process of research that I did and interviewing them, I mean, it was just it was just extremely mind-blowing to me hearing all of the things that they had gone through, all the, the obstacles that they had to overcome yeah. just to be here. And it left me very proud of them and very grateful for, for all that they had worked for and all that they had sacrificed for me. So that was a story that I wanted to share. And you, you shared a gorgeous picture of your mom at a bookstore next to the We Were Dreamers. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, you dedicated this book to your family, your parents and your family. And, and I, I gotta say, we, we heard that your dad read this book four times. He read it four times. He knows what happens. He <laughs> read it and he read it four times. And he won't stop reading. No, he he he'll text me every once in a while and he'll be like, Simu, I I I went through the book again. I couldn't put it down. Wow. You know, sometimes he'll just flip through it and then he'll get caught up in it. And what I think it means, I mean, he the, the, my favorite thing that he tells me is like, he he says, Simu, it really takes me back to when I was a teenager mm. in in China. And that means to me that that you know I did. I did a good job in capturing what his actual story was, rather than you know co-opting his narrative for my own personal gain or packaging it up for commercial success. It was like if if my parents can read it and truly feel like they were back, you know, in their home country, you know, in in the 60s and 70s, then then I would have done something. If somebody right. reads it four times, you know what it also means? It's a good book. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I hope so. Yeah, and also, Time Magazine's 100 most influential people. This man is on the yeah. list. Well, that was a big gala last night, and you were hosting it as well? Yeah, it, it was a very uh, surreal experience. I, um, m m a highlight for me personally, uh, well, for, first of all, I met one of my personal heroes, Dwayne Wade. Mm. Ah. Um, that was incredible. And I also, uh, I also cheers uh, Bill Gates with bubble tea. Um, that's uh, <laughs> something that I did not know that. that I needed in my life, but uh, I did it, and now my life is complete. Love that. Not many people can say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, talking about some of your other projects here, I understand that you're also going to co-star with Margot Robbie in the new Barbie movie, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're getting word that there was a bit of a, a hairy moment behind the scenes, or lack thereof. Or la or yeah, it's, it's more of a lack thereof. What does that mean? Well, one of the first things that I was told when I arrived in London to shoot was, Dolls don't have hair okay. on their on their bodies, and and they're like, take that to mean what you will, 
And before I knew it, you know, I was, I, I, I had a, you know, I, I was being set up with a waxing appointment. <laughs> I was, I, my legs were like, you know, there was like all this gooey stuff on my legs. And then the wax, and the waxing itself, I gotta say, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show one of the cameras. Oh, it's starting. Oh, you know, this we're is starting the aftermath. To, yeah, yeah, we're starting okay. to see some sprouts again, which is wow. nice, some signs of life. But no, truly, it was one of the most uh, painful moments of, of my life. That's getting into the role. So, I mean, a I newfound mean, appreciation. Laughing. I did my Magic Mike Double XL. I had oh. 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 That's a yeah, You just had your legs to worry about. Route. I didn't go to wax route. I couldn't take that. Many. <laughs> the things you find out live on TV. Oh, man. You know, I, I, I could have shaved. I could have taken the razor, Michael, but I no. decided to do the wax. Mm. I wanted to, in solidarity with, a, with a, you know, all of the millions of sisters who have to go through, have to go through <laughs> this and put themselves through it. I wanted to understand the pain, and, and now I can say fully, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> if only for a moment. <laughs> and, and, you know, something happened 10 years ago. You lost your job. Yeah. And that was like a life-changing moment for you. And there are so many people who had moments like that. What kept you going? What, 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 what mm. got you to where you are now? What advice could you give to someone who's watching right now and says, man, I'm in that spot? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, you put it very diplomatically, Michael. I was fired. <laughs> because I was terrible at my job. I was an accountant uh, out of graduation and you know I was so bad I didn't last I didn't even last a year. Uh, 8 months into my job I was brought into my partner's office. I was laid off. I had the whole security behind me. You got 10 minutes to get all your things and, and get out wow. of the building and, and it was just it was an extremely humiliating, you know, day. And then, you know, I was just kind of left sitting with this failure, this this idea of like everything that I worked so hard to build. Um, or maybe not so hard to build, uh, had all just kind of come crumbling down. And, and it, what felt like a rock bottom moment for me actually turned out to be such a blessing in disguise because, you know, you asked me what kept me going. I think it was this idea of like, well, now I was free to try something anything that actually made me happy. You know, I wasn't feeling fulfilled at my job. I wasn't feeling motivated. And, um, you know, I was just really just going day by day trying to pursue my interest. It led me to Craigslist, which led me on my, onto my first movie set. And, uh, and I was just so enamored by the, the world of show business and sets and, you know, cameras and all of that. Uh, that I just wanted to do anything I could to be back on a set again. And just, you know, day in and day out, it really started with allowing myself to give me the permission to pursue that which I wanted the most. Well, we're glad you yeah. took it. And you're here now, you're New York Times best-selling author, my friend. Thank Wax you. legs and stock Wax photos legs to go with and it. all. <laughs> <laughs> the book, Third time on Jim <laughs> The book, We Were Dreamers, is out now. Simu, thank you. Always great to have you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.